Wagner here, just about 11 o'clock in Honolulu, 4 o'clock in New York on Tuesday, 28th day of January 2014, and this is uh, the Daily Report for Gold and Silver. We still have nominal pressure to the downside. It is nominal. We are off the lows, low in gold, 1248.80. Current print, as you can see on the screen, is twelve fifty three sixty. Puts it off about two to three dollars on the day. It's had a high of twelve sixty two fifty. Silver currently trading off about twelve cents on the day, nineteen fifty six. That's our current screen print. Had a low of nineteen forty and a high of nineteen ninety five. It is off about a half a percent on the day, a little bit more than a half a percent with silver off about 1.7 or 0.17 percent on the day. More on silver towards the end of the show. You know, traders have a couple of ways that I'm looking at the lower pricing that we've seen in gold. Of course, we had the market literally fly off the handle when it went up $40 this last Thursday. Very little bit happened on Friday. I believe it closed up a couple of dollars, firmed up overseas, and then started to backfill. And that's what I believe we're seeing, a little bit of backfill. And one of the easier ways to look at it is to do a simple FIB retracement and do a FIB retracement from the beginning of this rally, which was roughly at around 31, to the top of this rally. And that will allow us to make some sense because what we'll do is we want to look at the 50 and the 76 percent level and let's go ahead and kind of move that over and let's also kind of scale these numbers to the other side but when we do that 1249 and of course this is very very short term because all we're really looking at is this price move up and a 61 percent retracement of that is 1249 so that could easily be what we consider backfill. In other words, the market moves up 61% and then begins to move higher. So as long as it maintains itself really above this price point here, and you can see it's trading now at about 54. So even on this 120 minute or two hour bar chart, let's go ahead and blow that up. You can really see how it hit this bottom, market comes down, hits this bottom here, and over the last couple of trading hours, meaning the last four hours in play, we've really, really rallied far off of that. And when we look at that in terms of our comparison, in other words, market's up 61%. And if we do see the market begin to rise, to me, that's a pretty good sign because we are really on the edge of that long-standing resistance line that we've talked about over and over again. And the fact that it broke above it to me signaled a really bullish scenario. And honestly, we have not seen that. The market has not really shown the kind of follow through. So we're either incorrect in our assumption that there will be a breakout if in fact the market breaks above it because it did, or we're seeing some sort of backfill. And, and the, the direct answer to that will be determined as, of course, this market unfolds. Now, the other thing that we want to look at and we want to consider when we look at this market, even though it is under pressure, it's showing us another, what I believe to be a fairly significant feature of a marketplace moving up, and that is you get a series of higher highs and higher lows. We'll fix this as our first high and our first low. This is obviously a higher high. This is a higher low. Higher high, higher low, higher high. We do not get a higher low on this particular occasion here, but now we've gotten our higher high. And if the market recoups from here, we have a higher low. So we're getting that standard kind of zigzag back and forth pattern as the marketplace moves higher. It's not gonna move higher in terms of a straight parabolic move. Typically, we do get parabolic moves, but Typically, you're going to see the market zigzag up, but you don't see it zigzag up in such a, a compressed manner. And what I mean by a compressed manner is the distance between these particular rallies and corrections, rallies and corrections, they're very, very tightly knit together. But nonetheless, we do look at this market and see that it at least for now, appears as though it's on an upswing, even though it's run into this real resistance up in this area, this top, and we really have some strong resistance, I believe, at about 1282. That's the next level of resistance we'll run into, and that's assuming that the market does recoup 
and does continue to move higher. Now, traders, I'll go ahead and compress this chart in a second. And you're probably familiar with what we're looking at, but this is really uncompressed. But this is that long standing resistance that we talk about. This is the point when we had a thoroughly a uh, strong move above it, market traded a little bit higher. This was on Friday. This, of course, is Monday's trading day, and this, of course, is today or Tuesday. One thing that we notice that really stands out more than anything else when we look at this blown up in this way is that we are getting these very, very small body um, candles, and that small body candles can be indicative of either a pivot point or a market that's in consolidation. And when we go ahead and uncompress it so we get a real sense for what this chart is, you can see that it is trading well above that point, but very, very nebulous. It's very, very much in an area where we could see it backfill and backfill really underneath this line. And I do have concern about that. I would have liked to see this market go straight off and running, but it has not it is still trading in an area that is above our particular target in terms of this long-standing resistance line. And as I said, it's only trading off at this point a couple dollars on the day. Now, I certainly cannot say the same for silver because we've looked at this market. We've determined that we have this long-standing resistance. You can see that here at about $20.50, uh, $20.50 per ounce. This is Japanese average, so we are getting true highs. We are not getting true opens and closes. But even if we do that, and simply to do that, we will remove the study, the average study. What we are getting, we've got a small gap right in here, although it's not what's called a true gap because you have the high, the range going into it, just not the real bodies. But there's no doubt, even through the eyes of a standard candlestick chart, we have some long-standing resistance. Market is trading lower. We have a couple of different points in which we'll look for support. But as I said, my key level has been 1958, and the market is certainly now trading below that. We are not in any position. We're currently flat in any positions in silver, and I do recommend that we maintain our long gold. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. Talk to you tomorrow for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.